Good evening, everyone. Hey, I'm Mike Asherbrander, the proud and humble leader of the Hounds of Business, and you are at the Hounds of Business Happy Hour. All right. Everybody's had a hard week, year, worked hard. Hey, welcome. I cannot wait to get this party started. My goodness, y'all. We, we got a special guest, special treat, and an organization that's just sweeping the daggone world right now. And we are honored. You know, birds of a feather flock together, y'all. I'm telling you, man, good people, they find each other. And that's why we created the Hounds of Business, right? So let's see who's already in here. We're not gonna, I'm not going to do a lot of antics. I want to make sure this is, uh, we get right to the source. So who we got? Of course, we have the one and only Dr. Constance Leland of Level Up Academy. Thank you so much. She brings her uh, publicity hub. She is our publicity hub queen and uh, brings so many affordable and accessible things to the table that business owners, startups, scale-ups, we all need, but otherwise don't have access to. So thank you for helping me level up and all of us, Dr. CJ. We appreciate you beyond belief. Look at this. Matt T is in the house. Big dog. So good to see you were on uh, Dr. Constance Leland's show on TV today. So uh, excellent job. And check this out, man. Mr. Kevin Smith, I got to connect you with this guy, right? Scott Heathman. Well, now he's going by Jeremiah Scott. He, the, the colonel. I got it right at this time, Scott. And with courage, man, elevating others. Uh, you were on the audio with, um, so he's backstage. Kevin's backstage. You got to meet Scott. I can't wait for you guys to connect. And let's see who else. We got LinkedIn user. Oh, come on. You got to let us know who you are. All right, I got to shout you out. Let's see. We got Royce. Royce Blake. The man was born for radio. His, his voice, man. And then we got, let's see, Jackie Olmstead. My goodness. She keeps me grounded, man. Uh, wow. So we already got fans of kindness in here. Boy, I can't wait to bring in uh, the leader of kindness worldwide. My goodness. So let's go. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and roll the uh, go ahead and roll the intro and we're going to bring it up. And then hopefully we have some more surprise guests. Uh, one of our very own. Right. One of our beloved kindness queens uh, might pop in and make a surprise. So we'll get the party started. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for all you do. And I want you all to interact, interact in the comments, ask questions. This is interactive fun time, man. We had a long, hard day. Now it's time to unwind. Let's network with one another. Uh, birds of a feather, guys. I appreciate you. Let's go. Looking to grow your network and your net worth with other high level heart centered professionals? Then grab a seat and your favorite beverage and join Mike Ashabranner, the Redneck Connector. It's time for the Hounds of Business Community Happy Hour. All right, welcome everybody. Hey, our special guest brought to you. I was introduced to Kevin Smith here with Kindness Worldwide by the one and only Dr. New. And my goodness, can't wait. She's going to join us. I was going to make a surprise, but she, her, her Internet's bad right now. So she will be up here. Uh, she is also an ambassador with Kindness Worldwide. Uh, so that, that doesn't surprise anyone, does it? Put, put me a comment. Are you surprised that Dr. New would be the daggum ambassador for something called Kindness Worldwide? I'm not surprised. So everybody keep on the comments, talk to hey, Becky. I knew it was you. Uh, thank goodness. So Kevin Smith, tell us, man, you have a, tell us the backdrop, take your time on this story uh, because this was captivating. You tell us where you started from, what you do, what you did. You built this business, this financial you know, empire, and then something happened, brother. Tell us the story that the, the hounds will love it. Go ahead. Yeah, well, first of all, Calabra One, uh, I see a lot of familiar names here. Uh, I feel like it's a family reunion. Some folks in my high school, my college, my mater, my hometown of York and community. It's it's great to see some familiar names here in the audience. But uh, yeah, where do I begin, Mike? I mean, this is like an indescribable adventure of a lifetime. And so let me just start with uh, the fact that for a number of years before Good Friday morning, 2023, I kept telling my wife that there's something coming. Call it a sixth sense, call it what you will, but I knew there was something else that I'm meant to do. Didn't know what it was, but I felt it and I knew it. And I would tell her this for years. Well, on Good Friday morning, 2023, depending upon how you look at it, my wife gets all the credit or all the blame because she gave me a honey-do list to go to the grocery store to pick up just two items. 
Now, first off, I never go to the grocery store, and there's a good reason I don't go to the grocery store. But on this particular day, my wife sent me to the grocery store. She even told me exactly where to go because I get lost in grocery stores. But uh, I had to pick up two items, the McDonald's gift card and shrimp cocktail sauce. McDonald's gift card for my niece. It was her birthday. We had some friends coming over for a party that evening. So how hard is that, right? Well, right. leave it to me to, to screw it up. So I, I purchased the two items just fine. I check out, drive straight home, pull in my driveway at precisely 9.55 a.m. based upon our ring doorbell footage. I walk inside, my honey-do list is over. I got the rest of my day free. I reach for my back pocket, and I realize I left something very important behind us, my wallet. Oh, no. And uh, now it's, you know, it's only money, right? But it's more than that. It's, it's, it's photos of lost loved ones in some cases. It's, it's time and convenience or inconvenience to replace driver's licenses and credit cards. So I frantically search my car. It's not there. And literally, just as my finger is, is pushing the panic button, which is ignition button of my car, at that precise moment, at 9.57 a.m., just two minutes after I got home, like an angel out of heaven, a young Good Samaritan woman magically appears holding my wallet, asking if it was mine. And, uh, you know, I went from like this a state of being almost like despair, right? You're, you're in a panic and in that instant you're overjoyed, like, oh my gosh, there's my wallet. And uh, she's holding it and I thanked her profusely. I offered her a monetary reward. She refused to accept it. And as she's about to drive away, I had the impulse to ask her name. I mean, she said it was Brooke. And I walked back inside after this, this happened. It all happened so fast. And I was just overwhelmed by, you know, what I just experienced, what I just, what had just occurred. And I felt that I didn't do enough to thank her in a more meaningful way. I, I, I did thank her, but I'm like, I should have done more. She literally went the extra mile for me. She drove 2.6 miles, to be exact, from the store to my home to return my wallet immediately without hesitation the moment she found it. And I felt I should have gone the extra mile for her. So I, I just impulsively, reflexively, I emailed the local news organizations. I emailed all of them. And I looked, I said, this just happened to me. This inspired me. Um, if you cover this story, it's likely to inspire others. But the main reason I reached out to them is I thought that if this young woman would see it, if they did cover it, it'd be a way of acknowledging her in a more meaningful way. Well, one news organization did reply within seven minutes. A local reporter said, yeah, I agree. We need more good news. She came to my home the following Monday, did an interview. Um, and in that interview, one of the, the, the comments I made, which is part of the interview, I said, God's angels are everywhere. And in that moment, this young woman was one of them to me. The wow. story aired that evening. And the next thing I knew it basically went viral. By Tuesday, a friend said he saw it in Florida. Another said he saw it in Arizona. It was in Hawaii. It literally spread all over the country. And the caption of the new, of the news story that went viral in most cases was God's angels are everywhere. And once that occurred, I said to my wife, no logical reason to, to know, but I said, this is it. This is what I've been telling you. There's something coming. I don't know what just yet, but this is what I've been telling you for years, something I'm meant to do. Wow. It bothered me. I, like The whole reason I reached out to the news was so that this young woman might see it and acknowledge her, her in a more meaningful way. And I had no idea if she was even aware of the story and all the positivity that it inspired. Well, it was a long shot. But no Hail Mary pass was ever caught that was never attempted. So I decided to throw one of my own. And any guesses, Mike, how many Brooks there are on Facebook? I don't know, 10 to 20 million, maybe. How, how many How many did you count through? How many did you count I, through? I, I might have gotten to a million before I was about to give up. But uh, I, I, I assumed right. it was spelled with an E. But I, I just did a Facebook search. What are the odds? And uh, it was several minutes. I'm scrolling, hoping I might see a picture. Something might resonate. And at the very moment I'm about to give up, I see a profile picture of a young woman and her dog that caught my eye. And I thought maybe it looks like her, not sure. So I messaged her on Facebook with a link to the segment. And sure enough, it was, it was her. No okay. Last call. And uh, she was very modest and humble throughout. She actually thanked me for thanking her. And she made a comment that stuck with me. She said, I'm just a blurry face. Because in the news segment that went viral, they blurred out her face 
to protect, you know, for protection. And, uh, and I understood, you know, the reason why, but it was not to shield her from credit. Right. But at least I knew she was aware of this segment, but that comment still resonated with me. And I felt there's still more I should do. There's still more I should do to pay it forward or acknowledging her in a more meaningful way, but I wasn't sure what. Well, believe it or not, a couple of days later, this story had spread so far and so wide that even Inside Edition became aware of the story. And if you're familiar with Inside Edition, it's you know millions of viewers every evening. It's, it's uh, one of the most popular uh, news programs in the country. They became aware of the story. I get an email at work from the story coordinator asking if I was the Kevin Smith in the story and uh, if I knew who Brooke was and uh, wanting to do an interview. And at first I thought it was a joke. I mean, I don't get emails from Inside Edition. Right. Right. And my friends have done you know far worse jokes on me before. It, it's up there with the, a prince in another country needs money kind of thing. You're like, oh, that <laughs> exactly. can't be right. Somebody's, yeah. That is, that's not happen. Yeah, that was my first impression. This has got to be a joke. Can't be serious. Well, I looked into it and sure enough, it was legit. And so uh, I reached out to Brooke and I said, look, this is crazy. Inside Edition wants to know if, if uh, you might be open for an interview. And, she, and Brooke was receptive to it. And so there was supposed to be an interview that following Friday. And I was excited because guess what? This young woman's no longer be, going to be the blurry face anymore. Everyone's going to know who this young woman was who did this wonderful thing. And uh, she's not going to be the blurry face. Well, as fate and circumstance would have it, on the day the interview was supposed to occur, evidently another storyline emerged. A little bit more pressing took priority. And so the story went in the back burner. They said, we're going to postpone the interview. You know, we'll get to it another time, but, you know, we'll be in touch. Well, long story short, the interview never happened. And, and among the many great ironies of this story is had that interview occurred, we wouldn't be having this conversation. There would be no kindness worldwide because my work is done because she would have been acknowledged public in a more meaningful way. So it became a story because of a story that never occurred. So it weighed on me like, well, now what? This woman's still anonymous to others, known only to me. There's something I felt I should do more to see that she gets the credit she deserved. Well, what do I do? Well, talk about another series of coincidences. On April 25th, now this is a couple of weeks after Good Friday morning. Good Friday morning was April 7th, 2023. Coincidentally, I had a meeting on my calendar with Stephen Martinez. Stephen Martinez is the York County SPCA Executive Director. I used to be on the board of directors of the York County SPCA. Stephen would update me on the organization. We had this meeting on our calendar long before the events of Good Friday morning. Well, Stephen was late for our meeting. And he apologized profusely for being late. Now, any guesses, Mike, why he might have been late? I have no idea. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> well, would you believe that he forgot his wallet? Yeah, hey, that was my second guess. How about that? <laughs> well, I, I just had to laugh. I said, Stephen, you forgot your wallet. I said, did you hear about my lost wallet story? And he hadn't. He was probably the only one in York County who hadn't heard the story. And I shared with him about my lost wallet and how I discovered this young woman due to a profile picture of her dog on Facebook. And he made a comment that stuck. He said, Kevin, you know, I've always felt that pets are like social glue that bond people and communities together. And I agree with that comment. I'm an animal lover. And that comment stuck with me. And so on the drive home, I'm like, hmm, pets are the glue that bond people and communities together. My sense was, sixth sense instinct said, there's a deeper connection with this young woman. I scrolled her Facebook feed again, and I discovered that she's passionate about animals like I am, but also very passionate about the York County SPCA. And that is when the idea of making a donation to the York County SPCA in her honor and the idea of a community celebration of kindness at which she would be honored took root. Again, pets are the glue, bond people and communities together. Let's do a community celebration of kindness at the York County SPCA, publicly recognize this young woman. And then it started taking on a life of its own because like, well, what does a community celebration of kindness look like? What does that mean? And it occurred to me on this journey that we have days, we have weeks, we have even months to celebrate a lot of things. And I, and I read where uh, one of these days, it was like National French Friday. 
And I'm like, I like, I like French fries. I mean, who doesn't like French fries? French fries are good. Too many French fries, not good. Right. I'm like, well, why don't we formally recognize a kindness week? Bring people and communities together. Let's have an event at the SPCA. And, and I thought, well, let's reach out to York County commissioners, see if they'll recognize a kindness week. And they agree to. And then I'm like, well, why stop at York County? Maybe Adams County or neighboring county will, will support it. And they did. And I'm like, well, why not go to Governor Shapiro? And he supported it, recognized it for state of Pennsylvania. And I would have kept going, but I ran out of time. So Kindness Week was like, well, let's formally recognize what I think is humanity's greatest asset, kindness, which I don't right. think we do enough to do. I mean, kindness unites us all. It transcends borders, distances, differences, cultures, and time. So let's formally recognize it, bring people and communities together. But what else can we do to, to really embrace Kindness Week? Well, what about blood drives? Um, you know, donating blood is a, is a great symbolic way of paying it forward. It literally can save lives. Our blood banks and capacity is very low throughout the country and the world. So let's do community blood drives. And then uh, these ideas just kept coming. Like, well, why don't we have our police issue kindness of citations to see the good in our communities? And, uh, and so this idea of kind of citations came about and uh, all these ideas just kept coming and it got bigger and bigger and bigger uh, to the point where it outgrew the York County SPCA. And uh, it actually got to the point where I, I had to start a nonprofit organization. And there's a fascinating story about how that came to be uh, through the efforts of my brother-in-law. But I know I've, I've kind of talked a lot uh, to this point to kind of bring up the speed um, but there's so much more I could share, but let me, let me just uh, ask if there's other questions that you have or, or things you'd like me to elaborate a little bit more on about what I've just described. No, you're keeping this thing bumping. So folks, you may have missed the whole story, but we're going to show a video in a minute, kind of recapping this, but this is so amazing to me. Absolutely. And let, let me, so I asked the audience, uh, who are just bumping. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Hey, chime in, ask questions, have fun. This is amazing. This doesn't cost anything. This can change the world. It really is changing the world and it, it changed your life, Kevin. And so I asked folks, hey, you know, share your story. And uh, Olu said, hey, since being on LinkedIn, countless number of people, acts of kindness has changed his life. Just being on LinkedIn, right? He's been in books. He's done all kinds of things. He's connected with Dr. Constance Leland, right, CJ? It, just because there's nice people out there. You know, who knew? And then uh, let's see, Michelle Ramos, another awesome hound. She said, her friend boarded a plane, flew across the country after she lost everything in a fire. And she learned no family came to check. All right. So she had people support her. Right. And they're busy. Everybody's busy. You were busy. You're running. I want to parse this out a little bit. You're running a business. Right. You're living life. You have a family. You have bills. You have wife. And then you lose your wallet. Usually that's about it, right? Cancel the credit cards, yell about it, you know, ruin your week. Right? I mean, it, it could have went south, right? I've been there. All right? I didn't know. Oh, I lost my wallet. My life is going to change forever for the positive. No, that's not what we think. But just the, the compound effect. Guys, comment on this. Just the ripple effect of a decision, an intention. And you just you just told this whole story where it's just this thing led to that thing. It's so wild. And then another guy loses his wallet, right? And then that's how you end up finding her. It, it is amazing, right? So where where is she now? It's, it's you know like how now that you went through this whole journey and connected and you know you found it and you have a common interest with uh, yeah. you know taking care of animals. Now where is she? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit. But you you mentioned a couple of things that resonated in terms of how this yeah. changed my life and and uh, and it changed my life in two ways. Number one is it changed my paradigm of the world, the lens through which I view the world. You know, seeing the good, right? Seeing the lead world yeah. through a, a glass half full lens instead of one is, is half empty. Because I was I was caught up in watching the news too much. I was a news junkie. I would be on my Twitter feed several times a day, watching you know news all the time, right? And the reality of it is, is the the vast majority of the news that we see and read every day is is overwhelmingly negative. And if you're not careful, it can subconsciously condition you to think that that's just the way the world is, and that's not true. Yeah. This act of kindness essentially snapped me out of a subconscious trance and made me realize that there's good and kindness everywhere. That is the norm. The bad is the exception. All right. So the theme of this journey and, and one of the, the mantras of, of kindness worldwide is see the good, be the good, go the extra mile. 
see the good, you know, look at all around, all around us every day, the norm, good and kindness. Right. And uh, so it changed my paradigm of the world. But we also cannot deny that that bad things happen. There's a lot of you know bad things occurring. And sometimes we get caught up in that. It's still the exception, not the norm, but we can't deny it that it exists. Well, the other way this changed my life is it gave me a renewed sense of purpose because I used to dwell on all the things I couldn't control. And it would weigh on me, it would bother me, it would frustrate me. And I would point the fingers at others in terms of all the things that they need to do better, that they should be doing, that they aren't doing, and all the, you know, the finger pointing about why all the problems are occurring. And I had an epiphany and, and I realized that, you know, I can point the finger all I want. It's not going to change anything. I can't control the actions of anyone else. The only actions I can control are my own. And so I, I looked in the mirror and I pointed the finger at me. And I realized that, you know, I was a good person before this began, before Good Friday morning, but I'm a much better person today because of this one act of kindness. And I realized that I need to be better. I need to do better. I need to be the change I wish for. And instead of dwelling on all the things I couldn't control, I became obsessed with what I could. And in this journey to simply acknowledge this young woman in a more meaningful way, it became so much more than that. It became about making a meaningful difference. And I started to see a path as things started to unfold about not just acknowledging this young Samar good Samaritan woman, but literally bringing people and communities together initially locally, right? And then it started to broaden and then seeing a path where this can actually be a model that can bring people and communities together throughout the country and the world. And that's where my brother-in-law comes into play. If you like, I could share a little bit more about how Kindness Worldwide emerged because of his role in this story. Um, my brother-in-law, his name is Michael Benko, and his whole career is about entrepreneurship. He's known throughout the country, he advises startup companies. He's one of the most brilliant entrepreneurial minds out there that probably no one or a few people probably in your audience have heard of. But Michael Benko is the reason there's a Kindness Worldwide today. In this journey, the York County SPCA asked me to write down my objectives because originally it was going to be at the York County SPCA. So I wanted to plan an event and want to know, you know what my objectives were. So I started to write them down, have a document so that they would have it. Meanwhile, my wife said, Kevin, you need to write a timeline of all the people that you're meeting with. Because I was meeting with people day after day after day. And he said, she said, you really need to stay organized, keep track of all the people you're meeting with. She'd refer back to them. I'm like, well, that's a good idea. So I had this document of my objectives, my timeline, and, and probably by last July or August, it was like 50 pages. I stopped counting about 300 people I'd met with or corresponded with. My brother-in-law happened to be up for a family weekend. This document coincidentally was on our dining room table. And I'm sitting in my corner chair. I have a coffee in my hand and the left, I have my dog in my lap. I'm in my little you know, sweet spot and I'm exhausted. I'm spent because I'm like sprinting a marathon. And I just wanted this event to kind of happen and kind of be behind me because I want to get my life back. I mean, I was very comfortable before Good Friday morning. I, my life, everything was in balance. Had the rest of my life figured out, at least I thought I did. And this document, so my dining room table, my brother-in-law reads it. Took him like took him like forty-five minutes to read it, and he, he kept reading it, saying, "Hmm." He's looking up at me throughout. He's done reading this document. He looks at me. This is his exact words. He said, "Kevin." Do you realize you have created in five months a sustainable, replicable model for kindness that has a higher probability of success and that limited amount of time than even the most promising startup companies he's ever worked with takes five years or more to do? And I looked at him like, what, what model? What are you talking about? I'm just trying to plan an event, do something special for my community. He says, Kevin, he said, you can't just leave this at York. He said, this is a model that can bring kindness to communities anywhere and everywhere. He said, you've got to start a nonprofit. You can't stop at York. And he said, you know, this can literally bring kindness throughout the world, communities everywhere. And I looked at him and this is this was a defining moment of, of, of kindness worldwide in terms of what inspired it, but also in my life, because I looked at him wow. and my my head went down. And my shoulders sank. And at that moment, Mike, I knew it was right. And I saw how big it would be. 
and I knew that my life would never be the same. And because as much as I wanted to get my former life back and get back to my comfort zone, which I had left, I mean, I was completely uncomfortable. This whole journey has taken me out of my comfort zone, stressed everything to the limit. It was like it was like a rubber band pulling in both directions. I wanted to get back to my former life. I wanted to get back to comfortably coasting and thinking I had the rest of my life figured out, play my guitar, my downtime and just chill. Meanwhile, I got the other direction, the rubber band pulling me in this direction, this calling, if you will, this higher purpose. And when, when my brother-in-law said that, I knew I had to go in this direction and there was no going back. Because if I didn't, if I saw a chance to really make a difference, make an impact more broadly, bring people and communities together at a time our world needs it, there's so much that divides us. we got to get away from this and into this, right? If I didn't pursue it, the utmost extent of my ability with every fiber of my being, then I'm part of the problem, not the solution. And uh, I've literally, I use the analogy sprinting a marathon. Um, I, I, I haven't stopped since. I mean, between last April, uh, Good Friday morning, till we launched Kindness Worldwide in November. I mean, I, I literally, it was like every day was so intense. I don't think it was till 10 o'clock the night before the launch of the nonprofit, I thought I was done. And then we lost a nonprofit called Kindness Worldwide. It's called Worldwide for a reason, because that's where this movement is going of Kindness Week, which I can touch on. But, but since that time, I really haven't slowed down. I've had moments where I catch my breath. Instead of going 180 miles an hour, maybe I'm down to 150, 120. But I, I got to get to a point where I find that sweet spot again. I, I guess the analogy I use, I say I'm comfortably, I'm getting comfortably becoming uncomfortable. Um, and, uh, you know, doing podcasts, doing, you know, this interview, look, this, this would have made me a nervous wreck a year ago. I knew it was coming. I mean, I, I, I can, you know, it's fun. I, you're, you're great, great host. Make me relax. But, uh, you know, I can do public speaking. I can do all these things. It doesn't mean I'm comfortable doing it, but it's necessary, right. To get the story out there to make the impact. So, uh, but, uh, as far as Brooke goes, uh, I've been keeping her in a loop because I'm very sensitive to her role in this. It can be very overwhelming knowing where this movement is yeah, going. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, she's, she's, she's excited about it. It's actually changed her life too. And in very uh, fascinating ways. And, uh, but uh, I, I try to do my part to like, let her be engaged as much as she wants to, but not let it overwhelm her because where this is going can be very overwhelming. But this story is proof that no act of kindness is too small to make a difference and change a life. My life has been profoundly changed by this one act of kindness. But it's also proof that anyone can make a lasting impact. And I would argue even change the world through kind actions. And this one act of kindness from Brooke Dubs, she's just an ordinary individual just like I am. That one act of kindness has now had ripple effects literally going throughout the world. And we all have that power within us. Any, any one of us has that power. Which I, I call it a superpower just to be kind in our daily interactions. And among the many beauties of this story is, is that we can see what the ripple effects are. We can trace it back to one original act of kindness. Everything that's happening because of it and will happen. But think about how many acts of kindness each and every one of us do every day and others do that have just the profound ripple effects that we never hear about. We never know about, never read about, but they're just as important, just as impactful. And that's a power that each and every one of us possesses. Wow. Look at that. There's so much to unpack. My gosh. Yeah. Comments. Hey, pile it up, guys. Hounds, you know what he's talking about. The hounds know, the hounds of business know what you're talking about. All kinds of acts of kindness. That's how we do it, right? You do something for someone else. They, they find a way to do it back when they can. And you just keep playing this this ping pong match. You know, it, you hit the ball a little bit and it keeps getting faster and faster. And that's what happened to you. You're like, what? You didn't set out to do this. It found you. And I think that is extraordinary. Could you imagine everybody out there listening? Could you imagine just a regular day, right? Just getting up and doing your job and then you lose your wallet and just things keep happening, right? And then what I find even more remarkable is your brother-in-law. You're just writing stuff down. You don't even know what you're doing. You know, it's like when somebody writes a bunch and somebody's like, dude, you just made a book, like a bestseller. And you're like, I just wrote a bunch of crap on paper. You're like, no, hey, no, you think you did. And, and that's what happens, man. That's why everybody in here is going nuts, because that's what the hounds is. It's like, look, we can do way more pushing each other up than we can solo. 
And uh, man, that is amazing. So Wait, I think Doctor News back. By the way, he's, now he's trying to brush your. That document now, by the way, is up to 300 pages because I haven't stopped documenting the series of events. Every day I update it. And uh, but yeah, it began with 50 page at the time my brother law read it and uh, up to 300 now. And uh, it's, it's been an event of a lifetime. There's really no words to describe it, honestly. And I'm doing my best here in the time we have this evening. But uh, um, the, the coincidences that have occurred and I've touched on a couple of them. I've lost count. I mean, I could tell you stories and stories and stories of how many other coincidences that have happened that have brought us to this point. And uh, that's why I said, like, uh, look, there's no doubt in my mind where this is going. Uh, there's very little doubt early on. I, I just knew it. I felt it. And uh, uh, again, this all began on Good Friday morning of all days, 2023. Yeah, I mean, you can call it coincidence, man. I don't buy it. I, I, there's a, so much at play. Opportunities, your mindset puts you in a position to capitalize on opportunities. Ke Kevin, you, it could have went the opposite. You could have just been a grumpy guy with canceled credit cards, right? Like, y'all hear this? It, it, it's amazing, man. That's what I mean. When you create the ecosystem and you work on your mindset and you just have that open, you know, I'm going to attract good things even when things think kind of mindset. That's the stuff that happens. I mean, it's a, I can go on and on and on, but nobody came to hear me. But I'm telling you, it, it's I just do things because I can, because I see value. I want to help someone in need. And the next thing you know, people are just booming you know now we got the cancer corner coming i mean you know i didn't plan on that i just saw people i loved and i was like you know what i'm gonna push them up and boy that just come back you know i'm like wow amazing uh chime in people i, I love this look there's so many comments i can't even keep up with my broken mouse so let, let's pivot to dr new because you got a video i want folks to see this before uh you know they got got to go eat dinner and stuff dr new how are you let, let's see if we can hear you can you hear me okay, Mike? Audible? Loud and clear. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, well, we're always happy to see you. No one is surprised that you would be an ambassador of something called Kindness Worldwide. But how did you find Kevin? How did you guys connect? And, you know, why are you so excited about this? Well, thank you, Mike, uh, for having us uh, on tonight, along with Kevin and all the uh oh. Maybe she should have picked. Oh. <laughs> you you can hear me, Mike. I can. Maybe you picked the wrong parking spot. Maybe you should have done the other parking spot. The reception. Keep going. <laughs> We're good. Uh, well, I had to switch from a laptop to a phone. I have two phones. Okay. Uh, I was like, if one doesn't work, I'm gonna have another one. So I have multiple things. But you know, it's um really. One of the things that uh, how we connect is that, you know, Steve and, and Randy uh, is part of the kindness. And I was added to the group. Uh, we have a group, you know, it's like if on LinkedIn here, we have a group for everything. Right. But what really I think the universe brought people to our world for a reason. That's what I believe on how when we met in the same way as with Kevin, it's like, we have this conversation that flows and genuinely care for one another. It's like um, there's no hidden agenda. It's just getting to know and how can we support because of it's the essence of who we are, what we thrive and what we want. It just appear. The people that is in your circle come together like Mike here, you know, the founder of the <laughs> Hounds of Business. I don't get any share. I don't get any vibe, but I truly believe because of the people that really heart center and wants to lift people up when you lift people up and being it start with us because if we're not kind we're not loving to ourselves we don't have compassion we don't have any empathy we're not kind to ourselves then the words and our thoughts and our action it all start with our mind it's gonna radiate out right people that whatever ways whatever action they do you're not gonna have grace to forgive others and when we hold on that grudges our health will go down we we go on this shiny objects this and that whatever the next shiny things come up that people try to please you right in this world but really at the core of the essence no matter where we are in life i think and that's where we all kind of intertwine and really lock our arms is that the world needs more of us to really speak up 
about it now. And when he spoke, I was like, you speaking in my language? You're just in a different yeah. body, right? The same way that we totally believe. And that's where I, I don't know why I, I'm, you know, I said that I'm different, but I see everyone is beautiful. I see people with lots of love and kindness, but people's like, oh, you crazy. But there's nothing crazy about it. It's the same picture Picasso can draw, you know, that Picasso drawing, but it's all messy. But it's what messy mm -hmm. is what's beautiful. The same way we all look different. We all wear different hats. And what Mike wear is beautiful. It might look silly on me, but that's the beauty, right? Being silly is not a silly on thing. me. It's okay. <laughs> but, you know, and I think, you know, because our health, you know, as a healthcare, prof, you know, professional, I see the ugly truth of putting a Band-Aid on. I generally care for people and help people to really be well within starting within us because i believe that everything start within us and everything we can change right we can change our world and because we have that mindset people that come to us is those type and the people who are meant to i share my raw and the kevin no i was like kevin can you, you know i share you with all and this is what i have but i'm going to give you my all because i want people to know who i am but what my hearts and desire but there's no hidden agenda. It's not because I'm doing for something, you know? And that is what Kevin, Mike, and everyone hear that when whenever I advocate for, it truly is an alignment. It's a it's a life long mission and a passion for putting people first. And I think the world needs more like I see CJ, many, many people from the level of Academy with the hounds. It's just amazing because of the people that we have really nurture and cultivate and it starts with us. And so I'm so thrilled and I'm so excited what this movement of kindness worldwide and it's <laughs> and we, we joke about it. But then I got a title, Kevin, that I'm the kindness queen for the hounds of business. What what kind of uh, alignment is now that I'm the kindness ambassador for Texas, right? With worldwide. <laughs> There are Amazing. No accidents. All right. The universe has its ways. Yes. When you align, right? When we when you put yourself out there, when you have courage before confidence, you know, you just heard Kevin say, Hey, I'm not always comfortable doing this stuff, but I do it anyway, right? Like because you know, five years from now, he's not going to worry about his his nervousness on this show or or uh, you know, some event. He's gonna be too busy watching everybody else just do things. That, that he couldn't do on the news. He can't control the news, right? I, I stopped watching the news too. I, I, I said, oh my gosh. You know, it's not that I don't want to stay plugged in. It's just, I can go to my little place called the Hounds of Business and make an impact in somebody's life. I can't do anything about national stage and all the division and problems. But you know what? Grassroots, we can build from the ground up. And uh, was that Michael? Was that your brother-in-law? Is that him? Michael Binko, is he, if he's on, uh, you might want to pop in. But yeah, Michael Binko is my brother-in-law. And uh, <laughs> oh, again, he gets all the credit of the blame too, just like my wife. <laughs> I, I love it. And if, if he's got the link, if you want to send him, hey, we'll bring him up. People are here to hear you guys, man. This is unbelievable. All right. So, I, do you guys want to roll this video? Because this video is really cool, and I like to parse it out. We can look at the website, scan the mm -hmm. QR code, guys. There ain't nothing for sale here. This is just the <laughs> movement that you heard. It. If you didn't hear it, go watch it again, watch the replay. Uh, this is unbelievable to me. That this is the most encouraging thing for, from losing your wallet, which is probably the worst gut wrenching thing you could do. Right. Uh, and I know nobody's telling anybody they lost their wallet. Come on. I lost my keys when they were in my hand before. So I know somebody's lost the purse or wallet. Uh, but e even then, it's amazing to me just how the attitude. Right. Even on the worst days. I mean, I had a real tough day and two amazing things happened in it. You know why? <laughs> because I was looking for it. So thank you, Kevin, for uh, affirming that. Uh, let's roll this. Let's roll this video. I'm gonna make sure we got this. All right. You got I don't this, have Mike. my tech people. <laughs> can a random act of kindness spawn a worldwide movement? Yes, it can. When a wallet was returned just moments after it was lost, a purpose was found. This one act of kindness inspired the formation of the nonprofit Kindness Worldwide with a vision to inspire a culture of kindness in communities throughout the world. Our signature initiative, Kindness Week Worldwide, launched in York, Pennsylvania 
saw the entire community mobilized to celebrate kindness in many forms. Kindness Week featured initiatives and playbook programs, including blood drives, kindness cards, K-12 and college students embracing kindness, acts of service and charity, as well as an innovative means of community policing, kindness citations. York Police Commissioner Michael Muldrow personally took to the streets in search of York citizens helping each other through kindness. It's time to kick off Kindness Week. We're going to be writing citations, but we're going to be writing citations for the good stuff that people are seeing around the community. Everything that you do for this community is important, it's impactful, and it's necessary. And I just want you to know that you're appreciated. So you had to be the first person yeah, to be issued a kindness citation. Appreciate it. For real. This community-minded policing has become a case study for others to consider and expand. If something so magical can happen in York, Pennsylvania, the same and other inspirations can happen anywhere and everywhere. The movement of Kindness Week is now spreading to communities throughout the world. As more of this story unfolds, we invite you to write its future chapters with us. Our Screen Scenes initiative, featuring the Kindness Factor, will showcase these many stories of kindness. Let's include your community among them. Kindness is the heartbeat of the world. Together, with your support, we can make all its hearts beat as one. You know, I watch that uh, video every time, uh, Mike, and, uh, you know, I get emotional just watching it because it was uh, one of the most meaningful weeks of my life when uh, you see how things come together and you knew kind of what it took to get to that point and seeing your community step up and seeing the, our police commissioner, Michael Maldrow, and the whole community rally behind this, what was really just an idea. I mean, I, that's the character of your county, Pennsylvania, and that's the character of our country, and that's the character of global citizens throughout the world, is you just give them a chance, give them a spark to ignite a flame and to showcase kindness. And this movement of Kindness Week, which again began organically enough, this has all happened organically, accidentally, um, taking on life of its own. This movement's now spreading to communities throughout the world, as you saw in that video. It's, it's gotta be celebrated in Australia in Italy, California, you know, multiple municipalities now in my county, you know, like dozens of municipalities locally. Um, the vision is, is by every community in every county, every county in every state, every state in every country, every country in the world. Uh, I'm going to be in Italy. I'm leaving for Palermo, Italy on Monday uh, with many of my friends. And we're, I'm doing a, a keynote address at the General Assembly of the World Kindness Movement. Uh, the World Kindness Movement began in 1997 in Tokyo, Japan. They were behind uh, World Kindness Day. And again, it occurred to me on this journey, the World Kindness Day is really the only day where we celebrate humanity's greatest asset. And even then, you know, as, as popular as World Kindness Day is, there's still too many people who don't know about or don't even celebrate it. And I'm like, we have restaurant weeks. The whole restaurants should go do things for the week. And we have a lot, you know, well, we can't have a whole day. kindness. And, and, and the World Kindness Movement for, you know, a number of years is, you know, we're trying to get formal recognition by the United Nations of a, of a Kindness Week. Well, you know what? It's time. And uh, in my remarks in Palermo, I'm going to be calling on elected leaders at all levels and all countries, including every member nation of the United Nations. to let's can we all agree on the one platform that humanity needs? It binds us all. And that, and that platform is kindness. And it's time to get it done. And there's momentum now building. Um, and it's going to take a coalition of willing. But there's momentum, I think, to get it across the finish line. And I, I'm committed. I'm going to give it my all. Look, I'm a go big, go home kind of guy. If you haven't figured that out by now, I mean, there's no going 50% here. Um, there's a path. Um, and we're going to get it done. And I don't know if it's going to happen by this November. We're going to get as many communities as, as we can by this November. But by this time next year, I want I want all 50 governors. I want I want official recognition by the United Nations. And, and we can do this together. It's not, this is not a me endeavor. This is a we endeavor. All right. This is this is our movement. It's not mine. It's ours. 
we can do this. If any of you, any of your viewers, if you know a local mayor, you know a governor, the proclamation's already written. It's on our website. You know, any, any mayor elected leader with a stroke of a pen can get it done. Now it's largely symbolic, but symbolism matters. Well, then we also have the framework. You know, we have the kind of citations, you know, let's, let's, you know, improve uh, community policing, you know, all departments elsewhere. Uh, we, we can do that. We, you know, blood drives. We need to fill up our blood supply. It's low. We can save lives. Um, we can implement kindness curriculums. There's a, we can teach kindness. So there's so many things we can do. The vision of kindness worldwide is to create a culture of kindness in communities throughout the world. That's the vision. And there's a lot of tactical elements in that to make that vision possible. One is that we recognize a kindness week, give it the backing of the substance it deserves. And then we implement kindness curriculums. There's a music element. We, you know, music's a great way of bringing people and communities together. We can use technology, fashion, the arts. There's a path and, uh, and I'm going to you know, give it my all. And, uh, and so many people now are becoming part of this. All of our ambassadors like Dr. Mu and others, you know, we're going to do this together. And uh, and we can do this together. And, and if I didn't believe this was possible, again, I wouldn't be I, I, I want my life back. Right. I, I'm back to my pre Good Friday you know, world. But I do truly believe that it is possible because I've already seen the magic happen in York and nearby regions last year. And guess what? York's going to take it up a notch even more this year. I mean, there's many police departments in York County engaged, more municipalities. We're setting the tone in York, but this is a model that every community anywhere can embrace and build upon. We're going to get it done. Wow. All right. I, we, we're going to have <laughs> 16 on this one. Now we got to come back uh, and we're not done yet. Don't go nowhere. Uh, but uh, wow. You know, because I like to know personally on the business level, like how do you balance this and all these things? But I want to make sure folks are geared up. Scan the QR code. Uh, go to kindnessworldwide.org. And, and just be a part of it. And, and so many people here are already doing it. So, Dr. New, um, what are you most excited about? Because you were born for this kind of thing, right? So, <laughs> what, 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 you know, what do you get the most excited about when you're a part of this organization? Is it seeing it going worldwide? What is it? Well, it is my, my passion and my mission to make it global and the kindness worldwide, what I envision is that let's bring the health care, bring back the care, the kindness. Just imagine the world that don't put money over people. Put people first to genuinely care. How are you really doing? When you go get a doctor visit, when you go get your medicine, it's not about, oh, this, 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 it's a checklist. You're not a checklist. No. You're not just a number. And that for me is a disheartened. I see a gap. And what we want to change is how we need to show up more and to elevate the people who have that passion, the drive to make that difference. And that's what we all are here. And it's really action driven, but start with the loving kindness. It has to have that compassion because I think that sometimes the system or the modern quote unquote AI, robotic, or whatever we want to call the movement of shift, right? The more materialistic world. But it, at the end of the day, we're all the same. And that is where let's bring us back. Let's bring humanity together and let's bring us uniting us. Let's not separate by colors, by status, by, oh, I have a doctor degree or I'm a janitorial. For me, they should be the same. They should have equal and equal treatment and not because, oh, you have more money then you get this treatment. Without money, uh, you don't get nothing, you know? That is where I think truly care, when you truly care, imagining that when you go get a visit, they care about your well-being, not just the dollar in the pocket. They want you to heal and the best for you without judging you. That is what we need. And I think the world needs more of us. We need more people. And I know that, you know, when I talk boldly about certain things, because I know that's the truth. So I, I'm not shy to talk about it, but I'm not unkind. I need to, we know how we can approach with kindness because I think the world need more of that now more than ever. And the one of the excitement thing with uh, Kevin mentioned, 
I've been doing a lot of different things, but on offline, you don't see me online, but on the grassroots on a lot of things I've been talking about different like school system because you know I speak in different speaking engagement. They say, you know what? Because I went to spoke with as a parent, like reading, but it's a mindfulness. So I was like, I'm gonna want to write a book, a children collection of mindfulness, how we need to be kind to our parents, our grandparents, like our teachers. So before we read a story, we have to have a what is the intention? What is the attitude, right? When the kids wake up in the morning before they go to bed, how do we want the world to be? And it's a reflection of how we grow, nurture our kids, because I'm a mother of two. And even if you don't have kids, imagine what the next world will be like. What is the hypothetical world that you like to live in? What does that look like? And let's make that happen. And let's not make that into a uh, a TV show that you think that's only going to happen on the celebrity. No, it can happen anywhere. And I think that is what we strive to do. Um, and I, I, I'm just so, so excited. So many things to come, right, Kevin? <laughs> Absolutely. And let's My make goodness. that the norm because I want that to be a curriculum for the elementary to middle school, high school, college to doctor degree, especially in healthcare. You cannot put in healthcare and not have kindness moral ethical class be a record like a requirement what does that requirement look like when you treat a patient it's not the the compassion has to come through you know and that is i think it we've, we've forgotten about it we just need to bring it back it's not that we don't have it we all have it we just need to bring it back yeah, I, I love it. And by the way, I can't get over it. You know, I couldn't get pulled over or the police show up at your house and you're all nervous. Like, oh, what did I do? Or did they find out? <laughs> like, you know, I stole that thing when I was 16. They found out. And then they're like, hey, you did some good stuff. Yeah, you know, like, you know, that's the stuff we, we need. We need more of that. And we can do it. It's a decision. It's a choice, guys. But uh, I'm preaching to the choir here. So uh, as we kind of, you know, tailor this and get to the end, I want to. So we all know your your initial story, Kevin, but there's got to be a gazillion other stories. And that's what I love about the website. Like you can find stories of kindness, right? Like you can find these things. So whatever it is, you tell me. I want folks to be familiar with this. I mean, I see Ink Magazine, all of these things. And you're a humble guy. I'm going to shout you out, but this ain't about you. I know your heart. So but to share something that recently or, or through this process that really stuck out. There's too many, but mm. what is something that you went, wow, all this because I lost my wallet and cared enough. <laughs> what is it? Well, there's a lot of things that have happened, but one in particular uh, stands out more than any. And, uh, you know, I said earlier, no act of kindness is too small to make a difference in, in change of life. But this story is also proof that no act of kindness is too small to make a difference and save a life. There was a, a woman who happened to see the full video on our website. There's a five minute video that tells you more of the backstory and so on on our homepage. And she had a link apparently to the, that video. And she sent me an email. And in this email, she, she said, Kevin, uh, I just want to share with you that I woke up on a Sunday morning in a very, very dark place. And uh, she saw that video and she said, it, it reminded me that I still have a purpose and I have still have a life yet to live for that purpose to be achieved. And she was again in a dark place. And I think long story short, fully anticipating that that Sunday was going to be her last. And because of that video, giving her a new sense of hope and purpose again, there's at least one person I believe in this world today that still has so much to give to this world because of this one act of kindness. And if that is the only thing that ever happened because of this journey, because of this indescribable adventure, then that's enough. I mean, it's all been worth it, but so much more is happening beyond that. And it, it, it's happening every day. It's this, this story is still unfolding and, and I say this many times, this is not my journey, it's our journey, it's our story, it's our movement. This young woman, Brooke Dubs, she, she might have, have written the introduction, so to speak, and I was inspired to write the forward, to pay it forward, if you will. But the most beautiful part of the story is not what's happened to this point, it's what happens next. 
It's going to be the chapters that we collectively write together. And, and that's the most beautiful part. And, uh, and I'm just so excited to see the chapters that have already been written, that have been written by others, by, by, by York, Pennsylvania, and, and by you know, Gettysburg, Westminster, other communities, Australia, Italy. They're all joining this movement, Greece. And um, we're, we're doing it. This is our movement. It's a people's movement. Um, this has not been something that's in the mainstream media. That we, you know, there have been no media tailwinds. There was some media coverage. There was things on our website you can see. But this movement has broadened and has been impactful as it is because of us, because of communities like yours and others on LinkedIn, social media. We are making this movement happen, happen but despite the lack of, of other attention from traditional media outlets. And I think that's also part of the opportunity but also part of the problem, because I think we all need to go the extra mile in our own ways to be a little bit better each day. Every single one of us individually, collectively need to look in the mirror like I did and say, you know what? I can do better. I can be, met, be better. The media has to do that. They have a role to share more of the positive stories. They mix in some positive stories from time to time, but the overwhelming stories, as we know, are overwhelm overwhelmingly negative. And that conditions us to see the world through that glass half empty lens that I was in before this began. Our elected officials all need to go the extra mile to, to be a little bit better, you know, to, to bring us together, to lift us up with uplifting words and visionary leadership. I mean, can't, can't they go the extra mile and just meet us in the middle? Because that's where we are. Uh, but, you know, we all individually can just do a bit better by you know, looking inside, looking at people's hearts where the true beauty resides, like Dr. New just mentioned, right? That's, that's what matters, right? That's what unites us. So long story short, we all have a role to play. We all are global citizens. We all want our world to be better. And, you know, we got to stop the finger pointing. We got to stop the divisiveness. We got to, again, look in the mirror, be a little better ourselves and focus on what unites us instead of being so consumed with what divides us. Because there's so much more that unites us that, than the opposite. And every single problem in the world today that we read about, when you really think about it, at their core, the world's problems might might seem numerous and the challenge is complex, challenges complex, but the solutions are really, really simple. We just need more kindness. And we all have that power within us to do just that. Wow, well said. So before we close, I'm scrolling through because I want to give a shout out to the folks who are busy people and you know, and what they this means enough to them. They believe in this mission that they want to support it. And I, it's just scroll page after page, right? And I, at one day, probably in a couple months, we'll just be scrolling for an hour because you have so many dadgum ambassadors. So we, before we close out, uh, I, both of you guys, I'll start with Kevin. How do people connect with Kindness Week and the movement throughout the year? What are some of the best things they can do formally and informally? Well, obviously, in terms of information, you know, access our website, uh, kindnessworldwide.org, uh, LinkedIn. We have a social page. My personal page on LinkedIn is probably the best way to connect with me. But as far as embracing the spirit of the movement is, is one is, you know, just embrace it in terms of you're limited only by your imagination, and creativity, and you put the, the characteristics of kindness into action, you know, gratitude, patience, forgiveness, empathy, compassion, respect, joy, generosity, service, right? Just strive to be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people each and every day, right? So our actions certainly are important. But in terms of furthering the movement, because this is our movement, um, again, we want to get the word out there. We want to get the story told. Um, you know, go to the website. Uh, again, the proclamation is already written. We can bring the magic of Kindness Week worldwide to any community, anywhere and everywhere. It's so simple to do. It's really, the beauty of it is in its simplicity. There's a framework, there's a toolkits on our website. All the resources are there. Um, you know, there's certainly opportunities for sponsorships. Look, there's a lot of community-minded businesses and brands out there. I know believe in this vision, want to support us. The beauty of kindness is it's free. It costs nothing. The movement costs nothing to further, but there are things as part of our vision that we want to achieve that are going to take some resources and, and we need help to make it happen. And I'm going to be building an organization, you know, just like I, I built in my wealth management practice, I'm going to build an organizational structure that makes kindness worldwide outlive me. This is not my nonprofit. It's ours. But we've, we've got it. If we want this vision to be possible, which we all believe in, collectively, we've got to make it work. So we're looking for sponsors. We're looking, looking for any support we can, whether in spirit or backing us with resources or grants, because I know we can make this vision, vision happen. 
Oh, you got the support of the hounds. That that's no doubt right there, man. I can't even keep up with the comments. I knew you guys would love it because you love Doctor New. So there you go. <laughs> right now she goes and gets uh, this. You know. Uh, so wow, Doctor New. Final thoughts, final words. What's this mean to you? And you know, how can folks plug in? Yeah, and so of course, you know, thank you again, Mike, for having us, and thank you, Kevin, for having me with the kindness worldwide it's um truly i think everyone can play a role and even if it start with loving yourself be kind to yourself right and then when you pass that love and that kindness to others and when you see a random act of kindness even if you can pass it to another person just imagine what would that do and then can you just continue on nurturing that to the next thing watch your own life transform your health every aspect of your life and then just you know reach out to any of us if you ever feel like you need some kind of lift join us for our mindful mingle we always have that every friday and kevin will be on with me <laughs> this friday before he head out <laughs> uh, for his speaking and uh, events in italy but it's literally i'm here mike the hounds of business the kindness worldwide along of course with the level of academy i see sisters literally it's how can we come back to us being us being kind being loving we need to grace ourselves a little bit more and when we do that and we pass it on to others the world will be a better place and the world needs more of us you know the kindness and it's truly when we're kind we don't need to expect anything we turn if i'm kind just let it go and don't expect anything return. That is the beauty. True kindness does not need anything return. And it will come back, but it does not have to be directly. And so, you know, I wish that everyone always, always know that they're capable of anything. And when we collaborate, we spread. Because one of the things in the past, people always think that I don't have financial, I can't support. That is not true support does not limit to your financial you can support someone mission by passing the word you can support them by saying hey join this event you share with your people your network is your net worth so really take care of your people take care of yourself and always be blessed so that is my word and always without our health we don't have anything so we have to take care I have my son at the music lesson, dropping off piano. You can hear my daughter. I took a picture. I showed Mike. I say, the mom of a working mom. My daughter just passed out of school. I'm here. I was like, Mike, I'm going to I'm gonna be there. You know when I say I'm committed, I'm going to be there unless something happened to me. Not on wood. But I'm always there because that's that's who i am you know that mike and kevin thank you so much and everyone in the with us now in the replay oh my goodness yeah well look we you know we love you dr new come on now uh and, and i'm so happy not since they put pb and j in the same jar has i seen such a good dynamic uh -oh. duo here man this is amazing and uh i tell you what yeah i'll tell you what so today i you know the floodgates open and I got underwater and I, I messed up double booked. And I didn't uh, calibrate my sundial. You know how it is. And so I had to leave a meeting and, and just felt awful. Well, guess what? This person had tremendous kindness with me. And then guess what? The next thing I know. So instead of getting mad at me and going, well, how could he, right? I get a post talking about how daggum great I am on LinkedIn. while <laughs> She's supposed to be at the meeting. So, Kevin, this is, you know, they're everywhere. And all you're doing is shining a giant spotlight on this stuff because just like Dr. New said, she said it went way more eloquently. You know, spread it. It's like a positive cold virus, right? Negativity spreads like wildfire. But, hey, let's bring our fire hose out and douse it out a little bit. Yes, there's negativity. I'm not minimizing challenges. I'm not minimizing pain. I'm saying, hey, is look, turn your head. I can focus on the negative or I can look for the opportunity. And that's to me, that's what this is about. People who say, you know, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of negative stuff. I want to see some goodness. I want to spotlight things that we don't normally see. So thank you for doing that, Kevin. Thank you, Dr. New, for bringing Kevin to the pack. Uh, 
absolutely great fit. That proved positive right here. The pack went nuts, right? And uh, we will have you back on, big dog. I, I love it. And uh, let's keep the energy flowing. Let's keep the positivity going. And any final words? Are we good to go? You got anything else to say? Because well, I just want to uh, thank you again, Mike, and thank to, thank you to all the hounds. And uh, you know, I believe that kindness is the heartbeat of the world. And together, you know, we can make its heartbeat and rhythm as one. So thank you all. Yeah, I Dr. just Luke? like to say, you know, of course, you know, kindness is um, whatever we focus on is what we grow. It's um, Tyson, uh, um, teacher, music teacher. We always pack her snack water. So she gave us the cooler <laughs> back. So I always, you know, I think it's whatever we want, we focus, uh, however little we can bless others. So just be careful, be mindful of our mind and our thoughts and everything else. It will flow. So much appreciative to you mike and all the hounds of business and kevin with the kindness worldwide and all those listening to us now and the replay of course the level sister cj <laughs> but let's pass the kindness worldwide let's make it far and wide and let's make this the norm and that's it let's focus on that and let's bring it more to light Right, Kevin? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. New. You're wonderful. It's such a blessing to have you as an ambassador. And, uh, you know, we're going to uh, champion this effort and uh, we're going to take it worldwide and we're going to change the world. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Hey, we're going to roll it up uh, next week. I don't even know who's on next week, man. There's so many good things. Oh, it's me, Tyrell, uh, with Media Mentors in the Seventh Realm and Eamon from Egypt. And uh, the one and only, I think I said, is Dr. Constance Leland. So we're going to have a good party. We're going to bring folks up. We're just going to break it out on a community basis. And uh, guys, appreciate you. Kindness worldwide. Hey, make it all day, every day. But don't forget to check it November 9th through the 16th. Go check it out. Spread the word with companies, organizations, people. Let's get this done, guys. Cannot wait. Y'all have a good day. See you on the next one. Princess Thank Wade. you. Thank y'all for stopping by. Be sure to follow, share, and like, and send me a message if you had fun today. Y'all come back now. <laughs>